Hello and welcome back to the Honest Business Podcast. I hope this finds you really, really well. Today we have an automated sales funnel Q&A, which is going to go kind of in depth. We're not going to cover everything, but I have got, I think, eight questions to cover. So I'll try and get through them as fast as possible. I'm hoping that this will answer something that's on your mind or potentially something that you're working through if you're building an automated sales funnel or whether you're thinking about it or maybe you don't have one and don't know what one is and you're sort of just intrigued whichever sort of category you're in this should help you for those of you who don't know an automated sales funnel tends to be doesn't have to be but tends to be something where you move somebody through a sales funnel without you being involved so without it requiring your specific time one-on-one you can build an automated sales funnel that uses technology automations sort of you drive traffic to the top of it which was usually through sort of social media or ads and then they can trickle through the funnel and inevitably hopefully I say inevitably (laughs) hopefully a percentage of the people that you put through the top of the funnel will then convert at the bottom of it and you can do this on a small scale of 10 people you can do it on a humongous scale of millions of people and to get that to work as a sort of productive system in your business there's lots of things you have to go through to get that figured out and today we're not by any means going to cover all of it because we would be here the whole podcast for the next like year could be about automated sales funnels um it can take shape in many different forms but this episode is more so for people who've already got one or in the process of building one and are sort of waiting to kind of make sure that they get that sorted so that they can either improve it and optimize sales further or get it going in the first place. So number one, question number one is, does every product need a funnel? And the answer to that is no. Not everything you sell in your business needs an automated funnel. I do believe that some services and products work better in an automated funnel than others do. So for example, And when I give examples today, I am really not saying it's a straight line of like, it will never work if I say X, Y, and Z. There's always a way of making it work, but I do think certain things are easier on an automated sales funnel or not. So for a very broad example, if you have some kind of digital download, digital product, some sort of PDF, maybe it's an ebook, maybe it's a template, something like that, that can work very well on an automated sales funnel and quite simply as well. What can be a bit harder is selling something, say, like a £20,000 consultancy project. Now, again, not impossible. And we can talk today about how you can do that. But there's definitely different products and services that are easier, particularly to put on the kind of first automated sales funnel that you build. There is ways in which you can connect your funnels, that you can tweak your funnels, that you can add layers to them where it makes it more complex. But on a very just basic level, if you have something, a a product or service that is under, let's just say, £100, that can be quite easy to put on an automated sales funnel and for that to work in your business. And when we talk about automated sales funnel, that's often what people are referring to when they're talking about passive income or semi-passive income. Like a lot of people, when they're saying that, what they mean is they're going to create a product or service once, package that up and then sell it consistently. And the way that they sell it without them having to do very much is because it's on an automated sales funnel. Now there's whole discussions around, well, actually it's not passive because you've got to tweak the ad or it's not really that passive because every month or week or quarter you have to go and look at the funnel and the data, but that is a separate conversation. Does every product need a funnel in your business? No. There's one thing to know is that actually in terms of a funnel, a sales funnel, Every product or service in your business does already have a funnel because a funnel is literally just how people are going to move to buy your product. But when we're talking about an automated sales funnel and we're talking about you not being the kind of main driver of that sale, not everyone, not everybody's product, service, every single thing in the business has to have that. You can definitely build it for everything, but I would say most people don't tend to have an automated sales funnel for everything in their business. They normally pick a kind of few different options um, that they want to kind of bring in as like their main automated sales funnel item. And then they have various different pieces that are coming off the end of that, that you then use and nurture through various of the pieces of the pie. Number two, how do I know which freebie to use for my specific offer? 
So again, what this is question is referring to is this idea that typically with an automated sales funnel, you can either have just the offer that you are offering. So if it's, let's just say it's an ebook, maybe you're just going to have the ebook that is, I don't know, 30 pounds. Maybe it's a guide of how to grow your Instagram following. Some people might put that on an ad or they might just promote that in their business organically. And that is kind of the product and it's directly selling just the product. And then there's a funnel that way. Or what typically tends to happen for a lot of people around an automated sales funnel is that you have a freebie that's kind of the detonator of the detonator of the funnel that then kind of kicks the funnel off. So to get people into the funnel, the pull might be a freebie. That can be a free resource. It can be something that you're giving away of value to somebody for free. And then through the process of that freebie being distributed to them via email, typically, the email then continues to sell and take people on a journey to then eventually, whether that's three days down the line, three weeks down the line, six months down the line, to get them to give them an invitation to buy something and to kind of buy into something that's going to help them further on the journey. So often getting that freebie right at the start is incredibly important because if the freebie is right, that helps the whole sales funnel to work better. Sometimes people build and spend so much time building automated sales funnels, the freebie's not right on the front end and therefore the whole funnel's not working, but it might be down to the fact that that freebie's just not connecting with people. So something that's really important if you're gonna build an automated sales funnel, let's just say for a course or maybe it's for a workshop or something, and I'm saying that that's a paid thing. So at the end, you want them to buy a course or buy a workshop or buy a um, intensive one-on-one -on -one session with you. The freebie that you choose needs to be appealing to the person. It needs to really connect with them about something, either a, de a desire normally or a problem or some kind of agitation that they've got. And it also needs to be linked to what you're trying to sell at the other end. What often happens is the freebie and the end kind of goal of what you're trying to sell are not connected enough or too different. And therefore the kind of match of the funnel doesn't really work. And it, it's sort of a bit of a juxtaposition. So the freebie, when you're trying to figure out which freebie do you use for a specific offer, there's many different routes you can go down with that. You can sort of extract a piece of the main offer that you're wanting to sell and kind of repackage that as a freebie to get people to get a taster. So if you've got a course, it could be that you, you know, give them a module for free or you take a tiny learning out of one module or one worksheet or something and you package it in a way that is digestible in sort of an hour for someone. And I really think, especially when we're recording this in 2024, people are wanting kind of short-term solutions and I say short-term solutions because <laughs> everybody wants a long-term solution, but quite a lot of people are kind of short-term focused at the minute of looking at, okay, I have this problem. I want a specific solution in a short space of time for a short-term hit. And obviously if you can give them a longer-term solution, great. But a lot of people, it's more about how specific can I get? So making that free be very specific and that will change as, as the market changes and as time changes, it will shift because it's I think it's only sort of recently happened where people have reverted back to this, but people want a kind of really core drill down freebie, especially if you're trying to reach an educated buyer and someone who, you know, if it's business to business and they spend a lot of money, they want something very targeted or very specific. Often people will say to me, I think it's one of the questions coming up, like, I can't find anything for my business that fits my buyer type. It's often, it's about the subject area. It's about what specifically are those people opting into. So when you're trying to figure out which fee freebie do you use for your specific offer, I really try and think for you to think about like, what do people come with to you at the point in which they're buying the thing you want them to buy at the end? And just work backwards, like go back to your message and documentation that you have built for your business or go and really look at that specific offering. You know, what are the pain points? What are the kind of pointers that help people say, yes, that is for me? How do they self-identify themselves? Because essentially with an automated sales funnel, the first bit at the top, you're wanting them to help them self-identify into the funnel and say, this is me. I want to learn more. I'm intrigued. And keep it really simple. Don't overcomplicate it. So I think really look at your specific offer and 
one of the things I try and do is think about what do I want people to know before they come into whatever the thing is I'm selling? What do they need to already believe in? What values do they need to understand? And what I mean by that is like for some of you, you need people to have a certain mindset or a certain attitude or understand a certain collection of information before they buy something. So for example, let's just say, this isn't happening by the way, but let's just say I was doing this podcast episode because actually in two months time, I'm going to run an automated sales funnel course. So this automated sales funnel Q&A might be like a piece of the market and that we want to do to kind of get people in my world thinking about automated sales funnel. For me to then just like put on the end of this, like come and buy the automated sales course that I'm running in two months time, you could do. And for some people, if they listen to the podcast every week and they like me and they know me and they're like totally bought in, they might just go and buy it. But most people are not going to. So a nice next step would be, okay, what's the freebie that we can attach to that? Well, something that we want to do is that for some people listening to this podcast today are completely alienated by it and are thinking, I've never heard of half the things she's talking about. So one of the freebies might be a kind of really interesting PDF kind of um, one-stop shop guide of here's all the terminology you need to know about sales funnel because there's so many different like acronyms and little bits and pieces that people want to know and need to know if they're going to dive into the automated sales funnel course so you create that pdf they've got something tangible they can skim it they can read it immediately they've improved their knowledge immediately they've got a dopamine hit because they're like oh i know something now that i didn't before they're immediately bought into okay if that's really clear because Mail explained like all these different words you know what does top of funnel mean what does bottom of funnel mean what does detonation point mean I understand what all that means now I'm intrigued and then we start sending them emails every few days or every week at the point in which in two months time that that launch of um the course is opened people have already gone on a journey of starting to see how they can connect the dots and so when you're looking at an automated sales fund, you're literally looking at how many more dots and touch points and kind of checkpoints and aha moments and kind of light bulbs can people get along that point before you're pitching to say, hey, come and buy this thing. It's really going to help you. So when you're working out which freebie do you use, you need to really look at your customer journey. You need to understand what are the things that are holding people back. You need to understand how are you only accessing a certain type of buyer? So are you only accessing problem aware people, but not solution aware people, which most people are, there's, there's not as many people who are solution aware. And so you're educating on the solution. And sometimes the freebie can do that. Sometimes the freebie can be as simple as here's like 10 different ways to make more sales in your business. One of those is build an automated sales funnel. Okay. Why is this so good? How am I going to do that? I don't know how to build an automated sales funnel. The next bit in your funnel is like, here's the automated sales funnel course. There's kind of lots of different steps of you can go through to kind of figure out what the freebie fit is for you. The question underneath that that I've got someone asked is, what freebie works best for selling one-on-one -on -one services? Now, this is interesting because I think a lot of people feel, as I mentioned at the start, that other services in their business might be easier, but actually selling one-on-one -on -one is harder. So, you know, and some of you might only have one-on-one -on -one services in your business and you don't have kind of 25 million different other offerings. When you're looking at selling one-on-one -on -one services, what I tend to say for the freebie works well is if you focus on the transformation. So really focus on what is the transformation that you're building and giving people during that time together how can you create a freebie that starts to either help them understand that that transformation is possible, shows them how the solution might work, or three, help them get into the belief system that that can happen for them. And the reason I say those three, you don't need to cover all three in the freebie, by the way, I would pick sort of one, is that some people have no clue that there is a transformation available to them. Like, absolutely. They, some people believe that whatever their issue is, is just the way it is. And so you providing that, oh, there is an alternative can be helpful. The idea of how your method works or how your solution can help them and what specifically you're going to do, that is useful for a certain type of buyer who really needs to kind of envision the whole thing and see the kind of map ahead. And so some people's freebies is literally like, here is the method that I use to 
double a business revenue in 12 months. That's really intriguing and people want to see that. And then underneath that can just be that you're showing them your method of how you work because that's then helping them see, oh, I don't do that. I don't have that. Maybe we need to work on that. I see how may or someone else could help me. And when we look at those little tiny things, what you might be now thinking is, this is quite specific and might not sort of address everybody's like all buyer types as kind of worries or thoughts or get them all excited at once. And I think that sometimes the best freebies don't. I think the best freebies really do target a certain group of people. Now, there will definitely be people who disagree with me and say, you can create a freebie that's going to like access all people. And you definitely can. But I think that really works if you're prepared to spend money on ads and you're prepared to kind of go down that route of being more generic because you're going to pay for a kind of wider net of people ultimately my advice usually is is that you create two or three different freebies and you test them on the funnel and sometimes you're going to have almost three identical funnels that are all going the same thing but you're testing the different freebies to see kind of which one resonates with who and also the one thing that I think is really interesting that not many people do is testing what type of client does each one bring in because this is something that people don't consider but it's so important. So certain freebies might bring you in a certain client at a certain point. And actually in your business, you might be like, I want to work with beginners or I'm actually looking for advanced and different freebies may kind of pull in a different buyer. Going back to the question that was actually asked, which is what freebie works best for selling one-on-one services. I think in terms of the, how the freebie, you know, what the format of the freebie is completely up to you do you want to do a private podcast that could be really cool do you want to do a traditional workshop maybe it's um pre-recorded so they can watch it straight away that can be cool something i would suggest for one-on-one services that if your one-on-one services requires talking which most people do you help them be able to understand what it's like to work with you so that's why i'm saying about a podcast or a workshop or some kind of ways of your speaking Doing something like a PDF, it still could work, but I just think that often if you're selling one-on-one, you're selling a connection point. The magic is usually in how you speak, how you talk to people, what your way of working is. And so helping people get that instant connection from you via, you know, voice, speech, sound is usually a really good option. And I think when also when you're selling one-on-one services, it's really about understanding who is it that you're trying to sell to? Because often, you know, if you're selling something for 47 quid, the pool of people that can buy that is normally quite large. For your one-on-one services, you might be at a point where actually it's quite narrow and niche as to who that's for. And don't be afraid to be very specific in that because it will allow you to build a freebie and a funnel that actually gets the right people in. For some people, it's literally just a case of how can you display information that they can find elsewhere, but in a way that's really digestible. So it could be that you share it in, you know, a white paper, for example, if you're trying to access a buyer, maybe in corporate or something, and um, they're used to consuming that format, give them what they're looking for. You don't have to be really innovative. It doesn't have to be this like never seen before thing. Another question underneath this we have is, I hate freebies. I can't think of anything for my business. Help. And again, this is another common question, I think, when it comes to building a funnel and everybody wants to, but the first hurdle is, right, well, what's the freebie going to be? And people sort of get stuck. If you feel like nobody, your buyer doesn't opt into freebies, that's fine. That might be actually true. I'd say it's unlikely because I say that actually most people have tried, you know, a free trial of Netflix or open if someone said, do you want this for free? Most people are going to go, yeah, actually, sounds good. So I think it's about you really figuring out what did they want versus what you are saying that they do, because this is where a lot of people make predictions that aren't true. So market research can be helpful to a point, like really speaking with people about what made you buy this existing customers and finding out what held them back. And can you pull anything out from that that would actually make a great freebie? Because if one person felt that, there's definitely another 10, 100, 1,000 people also feeling that who are not buying because of it. 
the other thing is change your perspective on what a freebie has to be. So it could be a spreadsheet. It can be a template. It can be a free ticket to an event. Like it doesn't have to be an ebook, a mini course, like a workshop that's been recorded five years ago. Like it doesn't have to be something that's more of a traditional option. You can really shake up what a freebie is because essentially you're trying to get an exchange of an email address most of the time and you're helping them sort of get this really short term hit and short term kind of buzz of a freebie so you know one of the freebies we have in the business is podcast playlists that's quite a different idea like that's not done a lot i've seen this year um there's a few other businesses and i'm not saying we were the first by any means i'm sure they were you know elsewhere but i've seen a few other businesses adopt that if you've got a big podcast catalog creating those podcast playlists was a really nice idea and actually it was one of the best performing freebies because people really liked that and was something they wanted to to opt into so like really think about what is your freebie is it a book for some people it's you're going to write a physical book and you're going to use a book funnel and that, I guess that that's a really, you know, big project in terms of a funnel. But for some of you, you might be there. You might be that place where actually that makes the most sense. Um, it's really about you thinking, why does a freebie not work for you in your head? Because when people say, I hate freebies, I can't think of anything for my business. Like, why do you hate them? Is it just because you can't find a good one? Is it because you're just like, oh, these are all rubbish? Is it because they're not advanced enough for you? Because sometimes if you hate freebies, it's often the best person <laughs> to make a one because it can help you be like, oh, right, I really want to create a good one. If you hate freebies, something I would say as well is create something that you would be happy to sell. And that's what I try to do. So we have the business refresh workbook. And that came from a place of we I made this workbook and it was like, well, what am I happy? Would I sell that? And I was like, yeah, I'd sell it for a small amount of money. That would be something I'd sell. And then I was like, okay, fair enough. Let's do it for free. And I think I took a little bit out of it because it was for free, because this whole issue of, you know, it needs to be ideally under an hour. You don't want to to give somebody something for free that's going to take them like six hours to get through because they're never going to do it. But create something that was meant to be a paid product. Like that was on our list as that's going to be a paid product in the business. And then we created it. And then it was like, right, put that on a freebie for me I feel really happy and I try and if we're going to do a freebie like for me that has to be something if I ran like last year in Q4 we ran a a masterclass which we hadn't ran for years and years that was another one where I would have been happy to put a price to that whether it was you know 30 quid 200 quid 50 quid 150 quid I was happy that that was going to be a paid thing and then we decided to make it free that makes me feel much happier than just creating bum for the sake of creating something. And I know some people feel like that. They're like, oh, well, I don't want to just create a PDF because it's this. And it doesn't have to be that. Create something that is on your paid product list of things that you want to create. Another interesting piece of that is, have you got anything that's currently paid for that you might want to turn into the kind of top of your funnel and give away for free? I think it's another interesting one. And again, if you don't like freebies and for whatever reason you don't want to offer a freebie, that's totally fine. Look at thinking about how do you put a small ticket item on the front of the funnel and then it leads to a bigger ticket item because that can be the case. You know, you can have something that is 17, 15, seven pounds, 40 quid that then leads them to something that's thousands. There's a dance you're going to have along the way, but it's definitely possible. Moving on to... I've got three more questions in this episode that are more about kind of looking at the funnel and kind of moving people through it. So this should kind of help. We've got what metric should I track to measure the success of my automated funnel, which is really good. So when we're thinking about you've got the funnel built, you've got people going through it, it's live, it's there for people to kind of check out. There is a lot of data that you're either your system is automatically going to give you or that you can go and look at. And sometimes that can be hard to know which of that pieces, which of those data points actually get us somewhere and which of those data points actually move us to getting more sales. Because sometimes people focus on the wrong 
data, in my opinion, on the sales. And when I talk about your software, what I'm talking literally about is either it's in your email system that you've built the workflow on, or maybe it's in your course hosting platform. Those two are typically going to be where it's at. It might be in your CRM potentially, but wherever you've built the sales funnel on, which typically is in either your email system and or together, sometimes combined, wherever you're hosting the kind of um, the physical product, if you're sent it, when I say physical product, I mean the product is in the course or the ebook or the template or whatever you're sending them. What do you track? So obviously looking at clicks is great, opens is fab. So if it's a six part email funnel, the first part of the funnel, the email one is here's the freebie, and then underneath there's some of the pieces looking at who is opening the emails, you know, where does the email rate change? Where is the open rate shifting? That whole situation can be good to use. Clicks is really interesting. So, you know, how many people opted into the funnel versus how many people clicked the download button or how many logged into the thing that they've got to log into to get access to the freebie. Looking at the percentage change is what's interesting. So looking at, okay, well, a hundred people, you know, let's just say a hundred people signed up for the freebie but we've only got 50 people actually clicking to download the ebook. So we've already lost 50% people somehow. So then it's like, okay, well, what does that mean? Does it mean that it's too difficult for them to download? Does it mean that actually the email's going into spam? Like it's, you start then being very investigative of being able to find out why is things going on? When I look at a business, especially if they've got automatic sales funnels already in their business, like I can sit for hours going through and figuring out why is this work and why is it not work and what does this mean? How can it be tweaked? How can it be improved? Now, inevitably, you're never going to get 100% of people who submit their email at the first bit to then do every single step that you're asking them to do and buy at the end point when you're 10 emails in. It's very unlikely. But there's definitely things you can do to increase the percentages each time round, every month, every week, like really change and stuff. The other thing to look at is video views. So for some of you, you're going to build a funnel and let's just say um, there might be a workshop there that's the freebie. Your platform that you host the workshop on, you might be able to see when people, um, how long people watch for, when they click to, when are they kind of fast forward and like you can see what the behavior is there, which is helpful. Also in your automated sales funnel at different points, you might have kind of external videos that are additional resources, or maybe it's a video sales letter. Tracking that clicks, those clicks and really seeing, is that actually doing anything? Are people even looking at it? Is it clear enough in the email that you want them to click on something six emails in? That is all very positive stuff in terms of really focusing on, is this working and at what point isn't it working? One of the things you could measure, obviously, is the metrics, is the money. Is that actually doing anything? You can obviously check check that if you're using ad spend, is the ad actually self-liquidating? And what I mean by that is, is the ad paying, is it being paid for in itself by the sale of whatever you're selling on the end of it, which obviously we're going to hope that it is. If you're someone who isn't running a freebie at the start of it, but is running a paid ad, you can look and make sure that if that front product is 15 quid, is that covering the cost of the whole ad, even if you don't then sell anything further on from that first piece, which, you know, fingers crossed, it will be depending on your cost per lead. When you're figuring out the metrics that you want to track, really take an analytical viewpoint of it and look beyond just the obvious ones of, you know, the clicks and the opens, the things like the video views, the things like how many times they've opened the email, the things like replies, have they replied back to the email? Have they, if you've left them a CTA, like a call to action at each point when you've sent them an email, are they doing that? Which ones are they doing and which ones aren't they doing? Because you will find trends in that. And that's the kind of interesting stuff that you then can dive into to really see what is going on here and what is to play. Look at, is there a correlation between people who are opting into this funnel who are already in your world versus people who are new to you and then the behaviors that them two groups of people are doing? That is a really promising one. And I think whenever you're trying to improve your funnel or 
you know, look at it and analyze it. It's about making very small tweaks and then tracking the changes. It's about, you know, A, B testing the subject line, which most email softwares now will allow you to do very easily. So really just checking what are you tracking and why and what does it mean? Because some people will literally just look at it as in how many people did we get in the top of the funnel this week? And that's literally as far as the metrics go as to whether or not it's working, which how many you got in doesn't really tell us if the sales funnel is working or not. It tells us whether or not your lead acquisition strategy is working or whether your detonation point technique is working. The rest of it doesn't tell us pretty much anything. And so really get into the nitty gritty of that is, is helpful. The next question, question number six, I think. This is a good one, is around integrating more products into it. So how can I integrate upselling or cross-selling into my automated sales funnel? When, <laughs> when we look at upselling and cross-selling, all we're talking about here for anyone that's like, what are you on about? We're either saying they have come in from a freebie and maybe within two days they've bought something that you propositioned to them. Maybe it was 15 quid. Maybe you want them to cross sell and buy something else from a different funnel that is a hundred pounds. And maybe you want to upsell them further down the funnel um, for something that is 2000 pounds. And the question is like, how do you integrate that to all happen within the one funnel. So there's a few different answers. Depending on how complex your setup is already is gonna depend on the answer to this. Depending on where you're currently at with this whole experience will massively take. So if you already have three or four funnels built out, you need to focus on connecting them together. And you can normally do that quite easily and you can do it through parameters of what is the activity that someone's taken? What is the activity the lead has taken? And depending on that, depends on which part of the funnel they then exit or enter. So for example, if somebody buys something within three days, maybe it then adds them to this next connecting piece of the funnel that, that is an adjacent funnel for a different offering. It might be that you use on your lead capture um, information. So, you know, at the beginning where it has, you know, what's your name? What's your email address? Here, we're going to send you this freebie. On that thing, you could have a kind of two tick box option where you're, they're self-identifying something in themselves. So if you're a beauty brand, for example, you could have, you know, what color eyes do you have? Or what's your main skin concern? Is it dehydration or is it blemishes and spots? You then select one of those options and whatever you select on those options can then adjacently add another funnel to them. So they might have the main funnel, but then they're kind of adding another funnel next to it, which then will take them on a different journey. And you can build this as complex as you want to be, depending on each step of the funnel and how long your funnel is, and then what the behavior is that they do. And then that can then move them to different areas. And you can do this in the sense of like, if it's not being converting, you can then maybe say, okay, well, they don't want to buy this. So can we sw move them if they don't take any action within, you know, the fourth email or the 10th email or the 12th email, do we then move them to a different funnel because they might be interested in, you know, they're not interested in a group thing, but they might be interested in one-on-one. -on -one. So do we give them then some communication about my group, um, my one-on-one -on -one offerings? All of that will depend on, if you have all of these stuff built out, if you've got all the stuff built out, it's then a case of either you yourself doing it or getting a team member or hiring a sort of consultant or someone who is a done for you provider to help you build out the kind of spider's web behind the scenes of connecting if and when and kind of connecting different arrows and pointers for your systems to then move different leads to. I would say with this is don't get too complicated. I think having connecting all the funnels together is really lovely i think you know unless you are doing millions and millions a year or want to do that i think it can get very complicated very fast and actually if you have really solid funnels standing alone on their own that have multi-layered products within them that can be enough and i think sometimes people do get themselves in a bit of a pickle when they've ended up with that many funnels that feel like they're all not really doing anything and it's sometimes you you want to revert back to square one and just have one funnel that's really really optimized and working well um but in terms of upselling and cross-selling and integrating 
it's very much about giving people time to process what you're telling them and whatever that main offering is and whatever that main thing is through that main funnel. And then I tend to say like, you either then offer it as an upsell at the checkout. So if they're buying a 200 pound course, but then actually, you know, you think I have this template that isn't included, but that is adjacent and actually is really useful. Can you just add that as a kind of order bump at the checkout point? Or it's then as they've purchased something, as time goes on, you then tell them something else. I'd be very cautious of don't just kind of offer them four different things you can buy after you've just signed up for one freebie. It's too much, it's overwhelming, it doesn't make sense and it really causes people confusion. And I think it also comes back to your customer journey and really understanding how do your customers buy? Why do they buy in the way they do? What is the average kind of lifetime of your customer? Is it two months? Is it four years? If it's four years, then like how can you build funnel and email marketing kind of strategy that supports them through that four years and actually offers them the right product at the right time? Because kind of overloading people with the start is not necessarily going to get you where you want to get to. The final question in this episode, and I'm more than happy to do more episodes on this because I know it's a huge topic and we've only kind of scratched the surface on this area and hopefully it has been helpful to you but I know we've been scattered all over the place so feel free to send me more questions around this if you wish to. The final question for today's Q&A is my funnel is not converting it just sits there what should I do? Which I think is is a question a lot of people can relate to. Most people in their business if you've been going a while will probably have a funnel that's just sat there that you don't really do anything with that you maybe made and promoted a bit at the start and then nothing happens to it. The question around what should you do, there's a few different options. You either leave it as it is, you start trying to get traffic to it and get people running through it, you tweak it and change it and update it because actually the reason that it's a bit dead is because it's not really relevant anymore, it's not really doing what you want it to do. Or you figure out why it's not converting. So this question specifically says it's not converting, it just sits there. Now, those are two different things. If it's just sitting there because there's no traffic going through it, then that's one issue. But it might be that actually you're saying it is people are going through the freebie, but they're not actually converting on the thing we're trying to get them to. So my email list is growing and my community is technically growing, but the purchasing's not there. If that is happening, and let's just say that people are going through it, but the the funnel isn't converting to sales I would probably go in look at the data see if there's anything obvious from the data where are people dropping off what are people not connecting to I then probably make any very fast changes but nothing huge and structural and I'd probably then do a small ad test on it and really see at scale what isn't working now I'm not saying spend a load of money by the way I'm not saying that at all But if, like, sometimes it's like you want to get a decent chunk of people through so you can start seeing that data, is it still clear? What part isn't working? And then start making changes, very small changes, to see if it'll tweak. Now, you don't have to run ads the whole time you're doing that, but I do think sometimes kind of setting an ad up, really being specific about your audience and who you're trying to get through this funnel and who it's for can be helpful. Because if it's like... For some people, it might be that they've already um, been in your audience, they're signing up to this funnel and that's who is filling those emails up every month. But actually the reason they're not buying is because they've already bought it before or they've already been in your world and heard about it before. So you might need some kind of fresh eyes that haven't, who don't know you to then see, is it not working? Because that's where sometimes the data you're using might not be valid and might not be reliable. And so you've really got to look at what is going on there. The thing with right okay it's not converting what are we going to do else with it I would really try and think about putting somebody through it who doesn't know you so like try and when I say doesn't know you what I mean is um somebody who you know but doesn't really get your business so I don't know your parent maybe a friend who doesn't know your industry like somebody just random that you can just say hey can you go into this and can you just read the emails when they turn up? 
they will have some really interesting things and reflections that you will not think about. And I think this is really important for us to do more in our business. So just like get some random person who like isn't probably the ideal person to buy from you, but doesn't understand your industry necessarily. And just say like, oh, is this compelling? Is this interesting? Like which bits piqued your interest, which bits didn't, which bits don't make any sense. See what comes back from that. Because I think you'd find there's some really interesting observations and takeaways and and don't use everything they say as like that's it then that's kind of how the funnel's going to run but I just think it's another data point that you can use that is providing you in a sort of qualitative data sense that gives you something else to look at um market research can be good from your ideal client obviously so maybe you want to speak to people that have previously converted in the funnel and say to them you know you bought this product what made you buy that like what was the the kind of detonator of saying, yes, I definitely want to do this. I'm going to buy this. And if your funnel isn't converting, it also does come back to this whole thing of does the freebie and does the endpoint match? Because if it doesn't, then that's going to be an issue. Like we have a funnel in the business right now where we built knowing that it probably wasn't going to work. <laughs> I wanted to try it and test it and be like, does this work? Like, let's just have an hypothesis, but let's test it. And we were right. Like it, it's not converting well. Now, the reason it's not converting well is because of a price point. And this was the kind of question of, is the price point going to work as the first offering and for like the first thing for people to buy? And it's not, it's too high and it's preventing people from, from the funnel converting. So it's working in terms of bringing people in and um, adding people to an email list, but it's not in terms of bringing revenue into the business. And so actually the action point for us in terms of that funnel is we need to shift what the thing is we're selling on the end of it. And we've got to change it to something else. Or you make the funnel longer and we put something in the middle of it and we kind of create a more in-depth funnel. But to be honest, actually the solution with that is going to be pull the offering out that we're putting on it and stick another one in there. And sometimes it can be as simple as that. I think as well, when you're looking at funnels, getting other people's perspective is really helpful in terms of a someone who knows what they're talking about. So maybe like a funnel expert, maybe someone who really specializes in automated sales or passive income or like that can be useful. Like I know I've, when I've looked at client stuff before, they're like, oh, I've just never saw that. Or I've never thought about that. Or actually it makes total sense. Like for sometimes it's the order of things and I'll move something and say, can we switch you know, part four for part one and can we move the emails around and like that little tweak in itself can be enough. The other thing I would say as well is just subject lines, really be careful. If you're using email for the whole of your funnel, just be very conscious of is the subject lines, are they working? Is that the thing that's causing the issue? Because something so simple like that, you don't then want to like break the whole funnel apart and move it if actually the subject line is the thing that people are just not clicking for that reason. And that's where you've got to look at, you know, open rate versus click through rate versus applications versus video views of what are people actually doing. The other thing to say is if you are at that point where you've got a funnel, people are moving through it. And they're dropping off towards the end and they're dropping off at the point in which you're talking about the offer and you're giving an offer and saying like, come and buy this thing. It might be that your messaging just isn't good enough for the offer. It might be that it's just not clear enough or isn't kind of persuasive enough in terms of making it desirable for someone wanting to buy. And I think sometimes we've got to be really open with ourselves around why is that? Because sometimes the messaging we build for offers is for our existing customers and clients and they can buy into it and we're definitely prone to this as a business versus someone who doesn't have a clue who we are and then coming in off the bat and buying something for the first time because those are very two in my opinion different messaging houses and different kind of ways of talking to your consumer or client and so being really specific in does that message need to be tweaked for someone who is new to our world? Because most of the time when we're talking about an automated sales funnel, we're talking about bringing someone in from outside into our world. You can, of course, do an automated sales funnel for any part of your business, but most people are talking about it in terms of 
growing your audience, bringing people into your world and them having a kind of first gateway into you. I hope that this episode has been useful, has been helpful. It's probably sparked some more questions. As I said, feel free to send them through and I can do another one of these in a couple of months time or a month's time. But sales funnels are fun. It's definitely something that you, (laughs) it's like an ongoing thing. I don't think it's ever done. That's why I laugh when people are like, you just build this once and it's done forever. It's like, is it really though? Because I don't think it is for most people. But yes, go away and have some fun with your funnels. And um, I will speak to you in the next episode. Take care. Bye.